What's up, everybody? It has been nine weeks of the NFL now. We are truly, truly deep into the season. And as a result of that, there is another week of fantasy football to discuss. As you know, I'm in two leagues, the Andy Zoltan Fan Club and the Ghoulie 12 League. We are going to go through the matchups this week. We're going to look at the winners, the losers, and people who maybe were unlucky, people who were maybe very lucky. And then we're going to do that for both leagues, wrap it all up, give our thoughts and opinions. It'll be a great laugh. So let's get straight into it. And as we can see here, I've extended my win streak in the Andy Dalton fan club to five wins in a row. We've gone from two and two to seven and two over the last five weeks, which is truly phenomenal. And after Ryan had a um, bit of an uptick last week, it was very, very nice to um, put him back where he belongs on that losing streak. I was a little bit worried that his team was going to all of a sudden come good and cause me a lot of problems. And in all fairness, it was a bit close than I would have liked. 15 points is a, a pretty scary, scarily close game. But let's have a look at the numbers and see what actually happened. Overall, no one was really abhorrent, um, apart from maybe one person for each team. Puka Nakua got himself ejected. And as a result, only had 1.25 points. And then Cole Komet, for the second week in a row, a big old goose egg. So, other than that, it's 99 and the scores were 127 and plays 112. So, no one did really, really badly. Baker Mayfield clutched up for me on Monday Night Football with 21 points to secure me the win. James Cook, poor game by his standards this season, only netting 10 points. Bijan Robinson, 20 points. Cooper Cup, 13. Justin Jefferson, 16.83. The new wide receiver duo comes good straight away, which we truly love to see. As we've already said, Cole Komet did nothing. J.K. Dobbins in at flex with 26 points. Will Lutz, my kick up, only scored 4 points. And the Lions defense netted me a lovely 14.89. On the flip side, James Connor and Devon Achan did a phenomenal job. Garrett Wilson and Puka Nakua could have been a lot more dangerous had Puka Nakua not got himself ejected. Mark Andrews wasn't good, but he was much better than Cole Komet. Devonta Smith with a late touchdown really scared this and made it a lot closer than I thought it was going to be. Kickers negate each other. The Bills' defense only managed six points, ended up being quite handy. What I will say, though, is for the first time this season, in fact, I believe it might be the first time in about three seasons, I played my perfect lineup. There were no points extra sat on my bench. Justice Hill doesn't do better than my flexor running backs. T. Higgins didn't play. Caleb Williams only managed nine points. Marvin Harrison only on point seven. McMillan didn't play. Steelers defense from a buy and Godwin, of course, is on IR. So for the first time, I think in two or three seasons. I played my perfect optimum lineup, which is always a good day. As a team called the bench, it's not a given at all. However, for um, Ryan, there were definitely points left on the bench. 21 points at quarterback would have been an 8-point upgrade. Jamal Williams, 11 points, wouldn't have been an upgrade. But Brown for the Bengals with 31 points would have been a 13 point upgrade for Connor, which is insane when he scored 18 points that you could get 13 off your bench, but still. Um, there was also technically a few more points if McConkey played over Puka and Nakua. So Ryan definitely had the facilities to beat me this week, but he doesn't check his lineup, he just sets it and forgets it. Um, and it's in previous years, it's won him the whole damn thing. This year, it's cost him to go 1-8. and eight. Them's the breaks. Next up, we have Anchor versus Tom. In what ended up not being that close a game, but for a while there, it was scarily close. Anchor wins once again, or for the first time in a little while. Tom on a six-game losing streak. However, is that the true case here? Let's see what happened. Obviously, Christian McCaffrey's out and Amari Cooper didn't play. So he's immediately down two players and the 49ers. He's down three players here. And he was still within 20 points. I'm very worried about this roster. If Amari Cooper comes back, apparently McCaffrey might be back soon. Kyler Murray had a 
abnormally poor week based on this season so far. This very, very, I mean, even if Kyler Murray would have got his season average, this would have been a four-point game with three players missing. This team is a little bit scary. Malik Neighbors, seven points is pretty low for him. Ferguson, eight points is really good. ETN was back after being injured, so first game back, still not bad. Brandon Aubrey, 10 points. 49 of defense would have been good for another probably seven or eight at least. Uh, Mari Cooper, even if we say five, McCaffrey say ten. There's instantly another twenty-five points there, just from the players missing. At seventeen, there's four. He's probably looking at a score of one hundred eight if he actually checks his lineup. And I mean, he's got Zay Flowers, who's having a breakout season finally with thirty points on the bench. Justin Herbert with twenty-three. There were there were points out here. We'll say. It's really concerning for Anchor, and we were talking about it. I kind of look at a team and there's no one that I'd want to trade for. Josh Allen isn't out doing Baker Mayfield fantasy-wise. Brees Hall's finally doing better, but he's still not lighting the world on fire. Jameer Gibbs is sharing touches, which does hurt his um value. Deontay Johnson has finally gone somewhere, but he didn't play this week. Alave's been knocked out twice this season. And we don't know how long he's going to be out this time. Brooke Bowers, really good player. But in our league, tight ends are worth nothing. So it's kind of weird because they're worth nothing. So you don't want to pay too much for them. But also, if you have a good one, they're very useful. So you want more for them. So it kind of becomes this counterpoint where it's basically impossible to trade for a tight end. Matterson is like the second choice at Vegas. Um, kicker, uh, Dicker the kicker, only one point. Uh, Texans defense. Okay, it's just it's not it's not a very good team. I mean, yeah, there's some points left on the bench here that would have had her break in a hundred, but still not ideal. Especially when Diggs is, I believe, out for the season. She's you're looking at a Carolina Panther wide receiver. You've got both the Jets running backs. You just find yourself going. There's no players, and unfortunately, there are no players kind of on the way. While I think. Or upgrades at the minute, which just puts me in a bit of a tricky spot. Next up, we have James, who is uh, conveniently not in chat as we're recording this for the first time, I believe, all season. He was on a seven game winning streak. He started 0 2 and he won seven in a row. He is now on a one game losing streak, having lost. On Monday night food, Monday night football, Monday night football, to Fraser. As Pat Mahomes has, I believe, his best game of the season. Let's check this quickly. It is indeed Pat Mahomes' best game of the season by quite some distance, and I believe it was largely due to a overtime drive. But let's have a look here because these are both very big scores. In fact, James would have beaten. One, two, three, four. He would have beat half the league. He had a top half score this week, which always sucks when you have a top half score and can't pull out a win. Let's see exactly what happened. Joe Burrow. Des despite a uh, potential concern going into the game about T. Higgins, where his scores this season have been lower about T. Higgins, he pulled out um, 35 points. Love to see it. Joe Mixon, 25 points. Very, very good. Aaron Jones, 15 points. Absolutely acceptable, especially when your first guy does 24. AJ Brown got hurt, which really hurt. Obviously, his scoring ability. I don't know how early he got hurt, but losing him early always sucks. Amon Ra with 12 points. You would expect a wide receiver of Amon Ra's caliber, if they get a touchdown, to be looking closer to 15 and 18, but 12 is still acceptable. Dalton Kincaid, 3.8 isn't bad in our league for a tight end. Coleman also got hurt, I believe. He's questionable. I don't know how late he got hurt. Um, only four points. Bit rough. Evan McPherson, stud as always, 11 points. And the Patriots defense, 14 points in that loss to the Tennessee Titans. So overall, I mean, it's, it's 123. It's a pretty good score. Is there more points left on the bench? Ooh. Smith and Jeeper. 
if you would have put him instead of Coleman, there's 28 extra points there, and that is a 150 score. Or even if you'd have put him in... I mean, you wouldn't put him in over AJ Brown. You can't legislate for someone getting hurt. It was a legitimate toss-up between Coleman and Smith and Jeeper. That's one of them ones that you just go, like, damn it. Smith and Jeeper's the kind of guy that people have been waiting for him to go nuts in the NFL for a while because he passes the eye test in a pretty aggressive way. And he finally had his breakout week. And unfortunately, I did read somewhere, despite having a near as damn it 100% ownership in fantasy football, he was only being started in like 40% of leagues which means a lot of people were looking at that very, very upset today. It do be like that sometimes. What about Fraser's team, though? Swift and Walker combined for 29 points, so they're down there. Hill and London combined for only 17, which is technically better than wide receivers, but not by a lot, as Drake London also got hurt on his receiving touchdown play. Ingram ekes out a bit over Kincaid. Hubbard with the two rushing touchdowns in the win over New Orleans, really, really hurt here. And then the Chargers defense, absolutely dog walking Cleveland, really, really hurt as well. That's a rough one. It all came down to Monday Night Football. Pat Mahomes balling out with 18 points. He didn't even need to have a season low for this game to be winnable. He needed to be right down there on the low end of his scores this season, but he didn't need to have his worst game of the season. And unfortunately, he's gone out there and had his best. Shit happens. Um, had he played Aaron Rodgers, that would have won the game anyway. Don't think he left any points. He left eight points. With, I don't know why anyone's got two kicks on their roster, I've got to be honest. But um, Matt Gay scored 11 instead of Young Way Koo, who only managed three. Other than that, not really any points left, is there? Um, no, that would have been it. So, really, really sucks that. As you can see on the graph, James was ahead by a pretty, like, comfortable width, basically, the entire way. They got a bit close at one point here, and then James kind of extended out of his last player of the game. And then, unfortunately, um, Pat Mahone started and just didn't stop until he caught up. I imagine... I imagine that one's going to hurt. It is what it is. You score 123 points and it's not enough. You just got to move on. Speaking of scoring a lot of points and it not being enough. Father scored 141 points. And it was not enough to deal with Scott. Who I believe for the third week in a row now. Scored 150 plus points. Oh my goodness, let's look at the numbers. This is going to be one of the ones where you just go, everyone score points, but let's see exactly what happened. Lamar and Jalen Hurts, two of the most explosive quarterbacks in fantasy football, duking out off rip, both scoring 30 plus points. Running backs, Montgomery and Pollard versus Kareem Hunt and Kyron Williams. Kyron and Montgomery kind of basically dead on the same. Hunt and Pollard, very similar as well, only two points difference there. But all of these slight differences have fallen in Scott's favour so far. A little bit of a concern. Wide receiver. Um, 16 and 9. 16 lose out Hopkins, um, but 9 beats Chase. So again, it, it is pretty close. But again, Scott sneaks it out. Tight end was a big swing. 13 points difference. And then Flex again, another big swing. Kamara with 31 over Tankdale with 14 is pretty difficult to overcome. Uh, and little bits eked out to back towards Dad with the kicker and the defence, but not enough to make any real difference. It's just everyone balled out for Scott. And he still left points on the bench. He could have had an extra six with Stevenson and an extra eight with Reed, which would have been what? An extra 14. He'd have been looking up at the 180s. What about Dad, however? 20 points for Dordle. Could have played him over Montgomery or Dell for an extra 6 points. Could have played Taysom Hill over Kit, uh, over Pitts for another 12 points. There's not really much else other than that, unfortunately. Just the way it is sometimes. Singletree's not had a particularly good season. Brian Thomas coming back from injury probably made sense to let him rest for a week. Bucky Irving didn't get much work. When you score 140... And you don't win. You've just got to kind of go. I mean. Unless someone on your team. 
was never going to play and you've left them in when your other option had like 30 points, if you score on 40, you just kind of go, there's nothing you can really do. It is what it is. Every single player, I mean, not even every single player, Jamal Chase had a stinker, only five points. But when you flex scores 31, it covers a lot of that. But 168 is a diabolical score. You do have to wonder if he's a little bit worried about his Kareem Hunt situation, though, with, with uh, Pacheco potentially on his way back. And he's not got... He's not got consistency on his bench. Debo Samuel's had a rough season. George Kittle has been pretty good, but so's K. Dotton. So he's not gaining anything there. Uh, Mike Evans will probably be good once he comes back, providing the injury doesn't get re-aggravated. Josh Taylor's a bit all over the place because the Colts don't seem to know what they're doing, but he's still a good running back. Stevenson scores a lot of points when he scores points, but if he doesn't score points, he really doesn't score a lot of points. And Jalen Reed, I feel like, has only scored points for Scott when he's been on his bench, which is just the way it is sometimes. So it could get a bit interesting. Hopkins finally, I mean, I say finally, second week in KC already feeling the love with two receiving touchdowns. Kansas City are a very, very scary team. And then to wrap up the Andy Dalton fan club, we have Cash versus Skip. Um, it was quite close for a while, I think. Um, no, not really. Pash just kind of got out on the lead and Skip was never able to close it down. Um, that puts Pash on a one-game win streak, Skip on a three-game losing streak, which is rough. Saquon Barkley, 38 points. Diabolical. That reverse hurdle is one of the most disgusting things I've ever seen in the professional sports arena. White, 10. Mooney, 15. Bateman, 3. McBride 10, yeah, I mean, everyone's kind of done fine there. 117 isn't a great score, but it's not terrible. And you've got a lot to build on as well when your quarterback and running back are doing this. Everyone else can kind of be okay. Unfortunately, everyone was just a little bit short for skip. Kirk Cousins, 20 points, not bad. Josh Jacobs having 14 points just from rushing and receiving. It shows how much utilisation he was getting. He just couldn't get it in the end zone to finish it out and get the points he needed. A touchdown there is a, another six points, and all of a sudden your running back's got 20 points, and it's nowhere near as big a problem. Tracy did an admirable bit of work to kind of wipe out White, but without Jacobs getting that touchdown, it just kind of didn't do enough damage. McLaurin, 14 points, really, really good. Two receiving touchdowns for only 14 points is diabolical, though. If my guy gets two receiving touchdowns, I want to see 20-plus points, which is, is crazy to say that he's got less points than Josh Jacobs from two receiving touchdowns. And then even more insane, Waddle, a receiving touchdown, negative four yards. So for those who won't, didn't see what happened... He got to receive touchdown separately. And now a different play. They tried some fuckery and he ended up like running negative for about 20 yards. And as a result, he ended up with a negative yards. But scoring a touchdown and not turning the ball over and ending up on less than six points is vile. I really feel bad for Skip here. If you told me Jalen Waddle was going to score a touchdown and McLaurin was going to score two touchdowns this week, I'd said his wide receiver room was probably looking at 30 to 40 points, not barely making 20. Travis Kelsey comes through 10.10, .10, but that doesn't outdo Trey McBride, so that's rough. Worthy, minus 10 rushing yards, negative 0.5. What's he doing? Unfortunately, like, oh, fortunately rather, that wasn't a game loser by itself. But worthy if he'd have been just okay would have been would have been like a game winner potentially. But yeah, poor, poor, poor. Elliot loses that C but kickers are kickers. Vikings defense sixteen points is pretty good. Any points left on his bench? No, not really. Could have had two extra points at kicker. Could have had an extra nine, ten points if he'd have played Algier as at flex. But yeah, there's really not a lot you can do there. Geno Smith with 24 points. Technically would have outscored Jaden Daniels by 0.4. But other than that, there's just nothing on his bench. Pickens on a bye, Mason on a bye. Metcalf didn't play, was hurt, I don't know. 
Njoku only managed three points in that blowout loss. Uh, it wasn't really a blowout. It felt like a blowout, though. Fair Ben only managed six points in the loss to the Jets. Pretty interesting couple of games in the league this week. Let's head over to the Gouldy 12 League and see what happened over there. And here we are in the Gouldy 12 League. We're going to jump the um, Let's All Laugh at Wag segment up a little bit because he was playing me this week. So... I um, took a little bump last week. I lost. But we're back to winning ways. That's four out of five in the last five. So we take those. Wag extends his loss streak to six. And this week truly shows how much Wag has um, given up on his season. 43.96 points. I'd like to point out 101 points beats only one other team this week. I had a bad week and I'm a little bit concerned about it. But you can only beat the person in front of you. I had one of only two people I could beat this week, and I did it. Let's have a look at exactly what happened here. Joe Burrow was um, traded to me during the week. Thank you very much to George, I believe. And it just kind of all went wrong for Wag here. Kyler Murray had a very poor game, not even making five points. Montgomery, he's only player to get into double digits. Tank Big B. Two points for him. Tutu Atwell, two points for him. Undale Robinson, four points. What a trends there. Kyle Pitts, two points. Tucker, two points. Brand, um, Brandon Aubrey was his second highest scorer with nine points. And no other two of his players could have combined to outdo Brandon Aubrey. You never want your kicker to be second highest scorer, especially when they've not even broken ten points. And then the commander's defense were four points. Really, really poor. And I've got to be honest, I wasn't lighting the world on fire with my 101. Joe Burrow with 30-ish. Brian Robinson, Bijan Robinson, sorry, with 21. Allen, I played with 0.9 for injury reasons, which I'll explain in a minute. Dubes, 6.8. Tank Dell, 18.6, which came in huge. Hunter Henry, 12.6. Brian Thomas, 6. Will Lutz, 4. Dolphins, 2. So, I chose not to play Travis Etienne, who would only net me an extra 4 points, but it would have been a better score, because hit both him and Brian Thomas were set to questionable going into the game, with it being very touch and go. And Allen, who was my only other running back choice, was playing Thursday night football. So I had to kind of bite the bullet on that early to make sure I definitely didn't have no chance of points there. Granted, it wouldn't have made any difference either way now, but that was the nature of it. I'm a little bit concerned about my lack of points this week, but the good news is Najee Harris, who's been pretty good, will be back. Fryer Muth, who's been pretty good, will be back, although Hunt Henry's done a very good job. Mike Evans is going to be back in the next couple of weeks. Nico Collins is going to be activated off IR at some point, hopefully. There's a chance if I can just kind of keep doing just enough to win that I might be able to sneak into the playoffs and create something where I can kind of just steal it at the last hour because I do not have the best squad right now. But let's go and see what happens in some other games. Josh is back to winning ways after the return of Tua, to be honest. Um... Kirk Guns 17, JK Dom 24, Devon Achan, 32 points. I read somewhere when Tua starts, Devon Achan has been fancy running back number one. If Tua's playing, Devon Achan is a must start running back. It is that simple. Tyreek Kill also back in the way of points with 12. Worthy did cost him a little bit, but unfortunately it didn't matter. Trey McBride, 12.7. Keon Coleman, 5 points. Dick the Kicker, 3. And the Chargers defense was 16. Netting him 122. I don't believe he left any points on his bench. Um, let's just confirm this. He could have technically had an extra two had he played acres at flex. But that is it. So, over. oh wait, no, that's that can't be right because he had a wide Jeeva. He could have had an extra seven in total if he'd played his best lineup. So overall pretty damn good. Let's see what went wrong for Joss. Derek Carr, 13 points, eek. Saquon Barkley, 32 points. I wonder how many losing teams Saquon Barkley was on this week. It can't be many. 
James Cook, 11 points. That's not horrific so far. Here we go. Alave, only obviously 13 points as he got hurt. Uh, two points, rather. Neighbours, 15 points, not bad. Craft, 7 points, not bad. DJ Moore, 7 points, not bad. He's just a little bit low here. If Derek Carr could have got up to around the 17 mark, and Alave could have even got up to like the 7 mark, you've got another 11 points there, and all of a sudden it's very, very close. Big difference maker was obviously the 7 points of defence. But other than that, there's not really too much you can do. That's a rough one to lose, that is. Um, he'll be hoping for better next week. Kareem Hunt left on the bench with 18 points. Myers on the bench with 18 points. And Tillman on the bench with 19 points. Has got to hurt, however. Could have had an extra 4, 7, 11, 16, 27 points like that. And that would have had him winning the game pretty comfortably. So that really, really does sting. Next up, Oscar versus Ian. Ian drops to a five-game losing streak. And Oscar is on a two-game winning streak with back-to-back -back massive scores, having scored 150-plus against me last week. Oscar is a very, very scary team right now. Let's see exactly what happened. Josh Allen, 22. Kamara, 27. Brown, 26. C.D. Lamb, 16. Zay Flowers, 29. K. Dot on 21. Austin Eckler, 17. Tyler Bass, 12. And no defense. He scored 173 points without a defense. And there were points on his bench. 10 point running back, 17 point quarterback. Very, very scary team. Um, very interesting to see what happens. Three passing touchdowns there. Receiving touchdown, two-point conversion, two receiving touchdowns, receiving touchdown, rushing touchdown. Oof, lots and lots of points scored over there. You've got to feel bad for Ian. Finally having a pretty good week of 139 points. It just wasn't enough. Pat Mahomes, 24. Justice Hill, 8.8. .8. Chuba Hubbard, 21. Mooney, 19. Smith and Jigba, 37 points. Mark Andrews, 4. Keenan Allen, sir. It just wasn't enough. Let's be completely clear here. Ian beats one, two, three, four. Ian beats everyone other than Oscar this week. It sucks so much when you score enough points to beat literally everyone in the league, apart from the person you have to be playing that week. The good news for Ian is his team is all starting to play better. Christian McCaffrey is expected to be back soon. 49ers defense will be coming off their bye. There is a chance that he can start winning some games in a row here and maybe put a little bit of pressure on a playoff spot if he's lucky. Oscar, now back up to four and five, will be desperately hoping he can win out and try and steal a playoff spot. Next up, we have George versus Tony. Let's see what happened here as Tony once again is on a winning streak and George is now on a losing streak again. Um, Dak, who obviously went out injured and is expected to be out for a little while. Mixon, Taylor, Chase, Harrison, Kincaid, Jacobs, Sanders and the Chiefs defense. You ask me to predict how many points that lineup scores and I wouldn't have said 83. It looks like everyone just underperformed by like two, three points. In fact, I'd say that's exactly what happened. On average, they've underperformed by two, two to three points. And as a result, he's scored 83 points. It's, it's a rough one. And then on the flip side, he's up against Lamar, Jar Lamar Jackson, Derek Henry, and Rico Dowd. The double wide receiver from VJ Ryan and Von Smith is interesting from um, Tony. Ferguson, well, yeah, it's just weird, weird matchup. Oh, yeah, Hopkins on the bench. And Pollard. Hopkins could have scored him an extra 25. Pollard could have had him an extra 10. The worst bit is he traded for Pollard from me. He traded me, Jamar, um, not Jamar Chase, um, Joe Burrow. For Tony Pollard, CJ Stroud, and who? Someone else. I can't remember who. 
Oh, that's really, really quite rough for him. Maybe Cole Komet. 58 points on his bench, and he could have won this game, I'm pretty sure. Pollard would have been an extra 10, which would have had him a 93. Could have had an extra 25 there. Would have been 118. No, he still would have been short, thankfully. He couldn't have won this game, but still. Truly, truly really rough. George has done a lot of business this season trying to move players around. It always feels like he does it just one week too early or too late. Next up, an incredibly close game in which Luke manages to eke out a win over Cam. Now putting them both on the same record, interestingly. Oh my god, and he did it with a player missing. Luke managed to win without checking his lineup. That's two people we've seen this week win. While missing a player. Goff, Connor, Stevenson, St. Brown, Brock Bowers, Aaron Jones. Yeah, there's something the solid teams. Baker Mayfield 18. Kenneth Walker, Rashad White, Justin Jefferson, Puka Nakua. I mean it's crazy. If Puka Nakua doesn't get himself ejected, Cam probably wins. If Luke updates his roster and doesn't play Debo Samuel, he's pretty comfortable. He's got 15, 12, 15 point wide receivers. They're all over the gaff. What a weird, weird matchup this was. Caught on something 23 points as well in there. Would have won. Both of these guys could have won this game about nine different ways. Because their scores are so close. But they also left a lot of points all over the place. So it's um, really interesting to see just how quickly this game could have gone either way more convincingly. But there you have it. Wow, what a close game. 0.12 in it. That's, that's, that's what, one rush attempt for two yards difference? And then to round us off this week, we had Mick versus Josh. Mick wins by three points. They are now both on a 6-3 and three record as well, which worked out nicely for me because I'm on a 6-3 record, which means I am tied for first other than tiebreakers. What happened here then? Garrett Wilson happened. Travis Kelsey happened. That's a big difference maker there. Although Cooper Cup and McLaurin did pretty well. Once you add in Jalen Hurts and that, you can see how this game only had three points in it. It's very, very clear. Hurts had him up by 10. Williams up by 16. Up by 12. Up by 21. Only up by 6. Oh my god, all of a sudden he's down. Once you get down to the tight ends, he's down by 10. Down by 7. Oh, it's, it's so close. Christ alive. What, what could people have done here to make their game easier on themselves? Swift 14 points would have given him a 4-point buff, if used correctly, which would have won in the game. But also 22 points for um, Devontae Adams over here would have made this game pretty comfortable. However, not a lot else. Both of these guys basically played a perfect lineup, barring one substitution each, which just goes to show how matched up this game was. Oh, there we have it, though. That is week eight, uh, week nine of the fantasy football. It's all getting a bit spicy now. I cannot wait to see if I can make the playoffs in both leagues. Thank you as always for hanging out. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.